Beruchim Haboim. Welcome everyone. We're about to begin Be'ezras Hashem together on Daf Pei Omid Beis at the very top. Our Gemara continues to discuss various items and their Shi'urim. In regards to Meleches Hoitso, the Gemara now brings a Bryce to Tonu Rabbonon. Hamoitzi Se'ar. If a person takes out hair, what is the minimum shear of hair? Says the Bryce Kedei Legabil Boyes Hatit. To knead together teeth, clay, to make it a good mold, that itself is considered to be the minimum shear. How much tit are we talking about? Enough tit that a shear of a revise of Mayim Shoifchin, the Mishnah told us, to make that tit and knead it together. This is the, indeed the amount that the Seya will also then be put together with this amount of tit. Tit la'asois pikur shel tzorfezov. To take out tit itself, the Bryce says, if it will then close the opening of a crucible to refine gold. Sid, the Mishnah says, is kedei losud. In order to then put lime on a bas ketano. The Bryce now explains tano kedei losud etzpa ketano shebebonos. It doesn't mean a young child, young girl. It means the small finger of a girl. Omar of Yehuda, Omar Rav, Bonois Yisrael Yisrael Shehigiu Lepirkon, Velo Higiu Leshonim. We're talking about those girls who got to the age of puberty. However, it was Lo Higiu Leshonim, it was younger than the norm. Therefore, they were embarrassed, whereby they wanted to then remove the hair using this lime. Benois Anim Toiflois Oisam Besid. The Brayster says, that the Benos Anim, they would use lime to then remove, to smear off on their skin. Benos Ashirim, <clears throat> Benos Ashirim, Toiflois Oison Besoiles. The wealthy girls, they would use fine flour. And Benos Molochim, Toiflois Oison Beshemen Hamor. They would smear the Shemen Hamor, the Benos Molochim. Shenemaz, it says, Shisha Chadoshim B'Shem and Hamor, in regards to Esther. It says, for six months, over there, in Megillah's Esther, they would use Shem and Hamor. The one wants to identify, what is the Shem and Hamor? My Shem and Hamor, Rav Huno Barachia Omar Stochas. He identifies the Mor as being a sweet-smelling oil. Rav Yirmiyo Bar Abba Omar, Shem and Zayis Shelohevi Shlish. It's olive oil that hasn't even grown a Shlish meaning it's coming from olives that are very mar, very bitter, and therefore it's called Shemen Hamor. Tanya, Rabbi Yehuda Oimer, Anfik noin, Shemen Zay Shelohevi Shlish. Rabbi Yehuda says in this bride, so that Afik noin was indeed identified as Shemen Zay that has not reached a third. Velama Sachin Oisoi, what is the reason why they would then put this oil on their skin? Shemeshir es haseyar umaadin habosar. In order to remove the hair and beautify the skin. Rabbi Bihavio le Barta, he had a daughter. Toflo ever ever. And he had her smear one limb at a time from this lime. Shokol ba dalin meuzuzi. It beautified her skin to the point where she was so desirous that he was able to get a large sum of money of 400 zoos as a shidduch for her. For fine young men who would be willing to pay even a large amount for his daughter who was beautified by this type of treatment. The Gemara recounts, Hava hahu nochi bishvavuse. There was a goy who lived in his neighborhood. Havya le barte taflo pechad zimno umesa. He had a daughter and he had her lime, her entire body at once, and she died. He complained that Rabibi killed my daughter. Other, instead of doing it limb by limb, which is the safe way of doing it, he killed his daughter because he himself didn't listen. He didn't do the way that Rabibi, he was thinking that he was going to then imitate Rabibi. But instead of doing it limb by limb, he did it in the entire body at once, which then caused her to die. Om Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman makes the following comment. Rabibi de Shosti Shichro Bain Bante Tefla. 
since Rabbi drank a lot of beer in his household, therefore it causes hair to grow more and become even more darkened. Therefore, he had to then do this type of treatment with a lime. But Anon de Loshasinon Shikro Loi Boyin Banson Taflo. But our but since we in our households, everybody else generally does not drink beer to the extent that they did, therefore we don't have to then provide this type of treatment for our own daughters. Says the Gemara, quoting our Mishnah, the next item is Rabbi Yehuda Oimer Kidei Lossud Kilkul. Rabbi Yehuda argues and he says the amount of seed is in order to then go on the temples of the of the girl to, to either bind her hair or even to take out to remove some of the excessive hair by the temples my kilkul or my andifi by the way after rabbi yehuda argues and says the minimum shear of line is kilkul by the temples so then rabbi nechemia argues and he says it's rabbi nechemia kidei lawsuit ondifi so the Gemara wants to identify what are these two things? My kilkul and my andifi. What is Rabbi Yehuda referring to and what is Rabbi Nechemia <coughs> referring to? Omarav tzida o ubas tzida. Kilkul is referring to the temples and that which Rabbi Nechemia is referring to is underneath the temples, lower down on the face. Lememro asked the Gemara, Deshiur de Rabbi Yehuda nafish. Are you going to then say that the Shia of Rabbi Yehuda is even greater than that of the Tanakam of the Rabbanon. After all, we learned previously in the Mishnah, we began the Mishnah by saying there are things like Chevel and, um, and Gemi that the Tanakama gives a Shia for, and Rabbi Yehuda is even, gives it even less Shia. So we see that Rabbi Yehuda is always more Mach when it comes to the Shiurim. And yet over here we're suggesting that Rabbi Yehuda's Shia is greater. Says the Gemara, Hokhaimulan the Shur and the Rabban Nafish. The Gemara is asking, we know that Rabbi Yehu, that Rabban have a greater Shur than Rabbi Yehuda. Answers the Gemara, Zuto mid Rabbanon. Rabbi Yehuda's Shur is smaller than Rabban, indeed. He is more Machmir. But in relation to Rabbi Nechemia, he is, have, is a, has a greater Shur. But nothing with Rabbi Nechemia. Meisve asked the Gemara on these, defin, these definitions of saying that Kilkul is a, the temples and <clears throat> and Difi is beneath the temples. Ask the Gemara Meisve. I'm a Rav. Near in Divrei Rabbi Yehuda bechavut, v'Divrei Rabbi Nechemia bebeitza hasid. It seems appears says Rav that Rabbi Yehuda is referring to lime with a lot of dissolved in a lot of water, whereas Rabbi Nechemia is referring to a little bit of amount of water dissolving in the the lime is dissolving with, whereby it causes to have small clumps of lime. Ask the Gemara, but if indeed that we're talking about temples and that which is beneath the temple, then you should use both Chavut, that which has a lot of, of water to dissolve the lime. So it's more of a liquid form. It would be effective in both areas. Ella says the Gemara Amar of Yitzchok Amrei the Bay Rabbi Ami Andifa. Rather, it's referring to Andifa. Andifa is something that has a chavis with two spouts, and when they would fill up the 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 chavis, they would seal the bottom spout, and they would do so with lime. Ask the Gemara if that's the case. That's how we're defining. And the, that to be Andifi. That's what Andifi is. When it has two spouts. Andif is andifo, then maski flo rav kahano, the hi odom oisim ma oisiv and dofrois. The andofrois is the lotion of hefseid. Is going to cause his money to then be lost. If you're going to say that this is the definition, that a person puts lime on the, to seal the chavis, then the wine will then eat away at the lime and it'll also cause the, the wine to become lessened, whereby it'll cause the owner to lose the wine and lose his money. So that's not practical. Elo Omar of Kahano Shnosois. Rather, the definition of Andifi is Shnosois. Shnosois are markings that were made for measuring. Kidisnan Shnosois Hoyu Bahin. In regards to the Yayin Nesech, they would take a volume, a Kli with the volume of a Hin, and they would make different markings. Ad Kan Lepar. Until now, until this point, is the amount of Yayin Nesech 
for a bull. Ad kan la'ayil. Until this point, with this marking, is the amount of lime, the, the yayin nesech for an ayil, for a ram offering. Ad kan lekeves. Until this point is a marking for the yayin nesech for the keves. The boys ema my andifa. Alternatively, a different explanation of andifa is apuso, referring to the forehead. Here wasn't, of course, to remove hair, but is in order to then redden the skin and try to beautify it. The chiho dahahu bar galilo, the ikle lebovil. There was a man from the Galil who came and visited Bovil. So, more is bringing a riot from this incident. That indeed Andifa is Apusa at the forehead. The Amru lay kum darush lanu b'maisim merkava. They said to him, get up and darish expound upon the maisim merkava, which is kabbalistic. Amar lohu edrosh lechu kedarish of nechem lechavre. Do you want me to darish to expand the maisim merkava like Reb Nechem did? To his friend, Benafkis Arise Min Koisel Umachde Baandife Umis, and a wasp came out from the from the wall and stung him on his forehead, Baandifis, and he died. So we see a riot that Andifis indeed is the forehead. Vaamri lay, they said to him, Min delay dole. That was because of him, and he was at fault, but you are somebody who can Doresh the the Maisa Merkova. The Gemara now brings the following Mishnah again in regards to various items and their minimum shiurim for Meleches Hoitzo. Adama, red clay from the earth, kechoisem hamartsoifin divrebi akiva. That is the size of the choisem when they would seal the martsoifin. They would seal the martsoifin, and the martsoifin were the large sacks that they would put merchandise and put it onto a boat, onto a ship. And those sacks were then sealed with this red clay. That's the minimum shear, says Rabbi Akiva. It's a smaller shear of the seal on the letters that were written. People did not want others to, to, to read the letters that were sent to somebody else. <laughs> Whereby they would put a choyz and they put some sort of um, seal with this red clay. Zevel, the mission continues, v'choyl hadak. You're talking about zevel or or chol hadak or fine sand. What is the minimum shear? Kedei lezabil kelach shel kruv. Dear Rabbi Akiva, in order to then mezabil to fertilize a stalk of cabbage, according to Rabbi Akiva. In order to then mezabel a leak, which is a smaller shiur. Chol hagas, if the chol is not fine, but rather it's coarse and it cannot be used, as we just explained, so it has a different shiur. Kedei liten al mole kaf sid. The Gemara will explain what is that shiur. Kone, when it comes to a reed, the minimum size of a reed, kedei lasas kulmois, in order to make a Pen for a scribe. Vim haya ave or marusam. If it was, th- it was thick, or it was broken, so it cannot be used for a pen. What is the minimum shiur? Kede levashil boy beitza kalo shebe beitzim trufa unesuna biilfas. In order to then cook a, a an easily cooked egg, that is scrambled and put into a pot. Gemara will explain that as well. Be'ezer Hashem. Says the Gemara, Ol mole kaf sid. Tano. The Gemara brings the b'raise, Kidei litin al pi kashel saidin. It's referring to putting on the kaf of the, which is filled up with sid, of those who make the lime, who are, who are, uh, who are in charge of making the lime. The saidin. Man tane de chol. Mali Lelisid asked the Gemara, who is the one who teaches that chol is good for seed, for lime, that you should mix together chol with seed, that that should be the shiur. Om Rav Chizda, Rabbi Yehuda, he indeed is Rabbi Yehuda. As the following Bryce indicates, the Tanya, Lo Yosud Odom es Beis or Besid, Elim Kain Irav Boy Tevin Oichol. The Tanya Kama says, you cannot 
use seed unless you mix it with it, teven or chol. We're talking about after the churim based on mikdash, where they would put seed on their houses, they would put lime on the walls. They required, the churim said, that you put, you mix lime with teven or, or, or chol, because that will then darken or blacken the seed and won't be looking as nice for the walls as a remembrance to the Chorben Beis HaMikdosh. Rabbi Yehuda Oimer, Teven Mutter, that would be permissible. However, Chol Oser, Mibnei Shehu Tarchasdid, because it causes it to become strengthened, the lime. And therefore, you cannot use that, even in nowadays, post Chorben Beis HaMikdosh. Rav Omar Afilu Tem Rabbonon, you can even say that not only is it Rabbi Yehuda that says that Sid mixed with Chol is a Maila, but even according to the Rabbonon, because Kilkuloi Zehu Tikuno, the fact that it darkens the Sid, that itself enables a person to use it as a Zeicher Lechurban, because now that it's darkened, it's now a Zeicher. If it would remain white, it wouldn't be able to be used, so it's considered to be a Tikun, and therefore it's a Maila. Gemara now brings the Mishnah that says the shear of a kana of a reed is kadei lasso is kulmus in order to then make a scribe's pen. Tana. The Bryce says kulmus hamagia the kishrei etzba oisa. We're talking about the length of a kulmus that goes to the kishrei etzba oisa, the joints of the fingers. Boy Rav Ashi, Rav Ashi asked, kesher ha elyoin or kesher ha tachtoin? Is it the upper kesher? That means where the fingers meet the hand, or is it the lower joints where it's in the middle of the fingers? The Gemara leaves it as teku as an open question with unanswered question. The Gemara now says Vaiter bringing the Mishnevim Haya Ave. If indeed we said that the Kane is either thick or broken, it cannot be used as a quill, so what is the minimum shear? To which the Mishnah said, the minimum shear is to, in order to then bake a, sorry, cook a egg that is scrambled and put into a pot. Gomorrah now explains this. What is this shear? Tana, trufa bashemen v'nesuna bi'ilfas. It was, it was scrambled with oil and put into an ilfas, into a pot. Omar le mar bere ravin le bre. Mar bere ravina asked his son the following question. Mishmi alach beitza kalamai. Do you know what this is referring to? The, an easily cooked egg? What kind of egg are we talking about? Omar le biyasa ditsiltzala. His son answered him, a egg of a small bird. My taimo. He asked his son, what's the reason that you think this is the egg that we're referring to that cooks most easily? Mishum de Zutra, because it's small, he answered him. Eimo de Tzir Farta. Then he says to his son, then why not say even a smaller bird, which certainly would have then an egg that would even cook more easily if it goes by size. Ishtik, his son was silent. O Malay. So then his son asked his father, Midi Shmielach Beha, did you hear something about this? What this is referring to in the Mishnah and in the Brisa about a, a small egg, an egg that is, that is easily cooked? The father says to his son, this easily cooked egg is referring to the egg of a hen. Why is it called a beitzakal that's most easily cooked? Because the chachami, they assess that there's nothing that's more easily cooked than the egg of a hen. Therefore, they called it a beitzakal in the Mishnah. Umaishno asked the Gemara called Shiure Shabbos Kigrogeres Vahocha Bekebetso. We know when it comes to all of these Shiurim that are in relation to foodstuffs, so their Shir is Kigrogeres. Like we say, Tchina, the Shir is Kigrogeres. The Malach of Kitsira is the Shir of Kigrogeres. So too, the Malach of Hoitza is also a Shir of Kigrogeres. So why over here are we saying that the minimum Shir over here is? cooking a full egg. Why not the smaller shear of a kirogeris, which is a dried fig? Answers the Gemara, Omar Lehochi, Omar Abnachman, 
No, it refers to the volume of the grogeris in of a Beit Zakala, not the entire Beit Zakala. And therefore, that's the minimum shear that he's mentioning over here, that smaller amount, kigrogeris, of a Beit Zakala is going to then be making a person liable for the malacha of Hoitzah.